time prophecy too much because it makes you acutely aware that Jesus is coming soon. You can look at it and you begin to see what's going on in the world. And then you begin to read in Scripture that these things are going to come to pass. And that's how you know that His coming is very nigh. Amen. And it can get people upset. It can get you stirred up. And it should. Because the most important thing is we've got to be ready Amen. when He comes. But I like the Scripture from John chapter number 14. The Bible says the words of Jesus, Let, your heart be, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So for the people of God that have prepared for His coming, amen. It's not something that we should dread, but it's something that we should rejoice and look forward to. Jesus comes and catches his bride away. I want to be in that number.
your touch, God, to the ears of your spirit. For the peace, Lord, of the Holy Ghost that passes understanding.
Amen. That's not the end of the story. We all have a soul that's going to live on. Amen. Yes. And I want to live in the presence yes. of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated if you'd like to. Christian, would you help us take up the offering this morning? We're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Praise the Lord. We're going to work until Jesus comes. Amen. And that's why when you give in the offering, amen, you're giving to the work of the Lord yes. and expanding the gospel in our area. Amen. The Lord bless you this morning as you give. Amen. God's been that good to me. That's the Rocky. Personal 
Yes. 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 They say, do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? Well, yeah, right. I do, because he's inside of me. Yes. Right. And he goes with me everywhere. But continue to pray for all those people around my house, because there's not near as many of them, because I run most of them off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because I'm tired of the way they do. And so I just told them to leave if they're not going to straighten up. And I felt like that's what God wanted me to tell them. You know, I'll give you a chance and you need to straighten up. I'm going to put up with that. And, you know, the Lord is not always uh, patting us on the back and, and telling us how sweet we are. He may be patting us on our little back end, too, sometimes. And saying, you haven't been quite what you ought to be. And I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sister Bailey is going to come and sing for us. I want you to come right on. They said you got a special. I, I hope you do. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can tell you, we talk about this a lot in our house, and I don't mean to embarrass Sister Lee, but I'll tell you something that I appreciate about Sister Lee. It doesn't matter what's going on in the service, if it's quiet or if it's shouting, she's involved. Amen. 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 And I love the fact that if I look around, I can look at her and she has a smile on her face yes. and she's happy to be in church. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you're preaching, if nobody else is into it, I can look at Sister Lee and she yes. acts like that this is the first time she's ever heard anybody talk about Jesus yes. or the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I appreciate yes. that. Somebody has been living for God for a long time done in their life and where he has brought them yes. from. Amen. Amen. Let's worship with Sister Mary as she sings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I'm just thankful I can be here. Sorry my husband couldn't be here. He has not been feeling good camping. It's not for him. <laughs> <laughs> he got sick, so we came home early. But God is so good. That song she was saying, God is good to me. Yes. My, he's good to me. I've been blessed. Sister Lee, you talking about how you were brought in. Yes. And I remember the day that my mom, I remember talking about it, in other words, how that she was brought in the truth. And I'm thankful for that because that's my heritage. I'm so thankful for it. You know, if I can at this moment, I would like for the Dixons and the babies, if you would just come off of your uh, positions right now and, and just maybe just come up here and stand on each side. Uh, sister, maybe you would. Brother Faith right here, and Brother Dixon right here. You know, I was going to sing this little song, and I tried and tried to get a tune to it, and I never heard it. I just tried to make it up. You know. So I'm not going to try to sing it, but I want to read this little song to them. And uh, I want them to know that I appreciate them so much. Amen. Amen. I really do. My goodness, Jamie, just think about all this lady does. <laughs> and brother, brother uh, baby, and how did they serve this church ever since they came here? Yes, I know. You know, they went somewhere else. Yeah. And they chose to come here and minister Amen. with our pastor and his wife. And I want them to know this church and myself, Brother Bailey, really, really appreciate you doing it. Yeah. And my goodness, how could we make it without Brother Nixon and Sister Nixon? Amen. They are so precious. Yes. I can't even say the words that how much we appreciate them. Amen. You know, they're not just our pastor and his wife. They're our friends. This is our family. They are our family. They're just working hard. They've gone through so much. And I think about the things they've gone through since they've been here. 
and how that God has brought them through. Yes. Look at our church. Just look at all that's been done. And God's not finished. That's right. He's not finished. That's right. But anyway, I want to read this little song to them. If I can. It says, Just our little congregation gathered in the church house pews. Saturday after Sunday, our eyes are all on you. Though it's not always easy, sometimes your strength seems gone. But through it all, you've shown us, to us, how to carry on. No one knows the hours you spent down on your knees. The tear stains on your pillows, no one sees. But in heaven, there's a record of all you say and do. And today we're giving honor where honor is due. Because you gave, just look around and see. All the light, Brother Dixon, if you and Brother Baby you could just imagine looking out there today and see this church full. Yeah. It's going to happen. I, mean, I believe the end time is so close that people are going to start walking in, in this building. I really believe that. And because you gave, just look around and see all the lives that have been changed for eternity. Every sacrifice made a difference in our lives. That is why we say thanks. That is why we're here today, because of you. Then one day up in heaven, you'll hear him say, well done. And then you'll hear him call our names, each one, one by one. You will see us walk through heaven's gate with tears in your eyes. My husband, I read this to him, he said, there's kind of not going to be with tears in heaven. That's what he said. For we all made it safely home. We love you all very much. Exactly the same. Yes. Give it everything you've got every time. 
And that's what I try to do. Yes. Amen. And I think that goes for more than just preachers. <coughs> I think it goes for saints of God. That when you have an opportunity to be in church and be in the presence of the Lord, Amen. You may not have had the best day. There may be things that's going on that you're not particularly fond of or having just a wonderful time. But when you're in the presence of the Lord yes. and you're in His house, we need to give Him everything yes. that we've got. Yes. We need to worship. Yes. We need to pray. We need to exalt Him. Amen. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Amen. This may be your last opportunity. Nobody knows. And I don't want to leave those doors today without giving Jesus my very best, my next. My wife is going to come and sing for us. Let's worship with her. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you all so much. And um, I think I speak for all four of us when I say that you embarrass us to death. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's like it's the first time everybody said anything nice to us. <laughs> um, we love you all so, so much. And I just we are just so blessed. Not just to have you as a church, but to have you as family. And I know it's been said before often, but and that's what we are, is, is a family. Yes. Um, God brought us here. Um, this is not a pity party, but it's, it hasn't been the smoothest ride. It's not like we moved here and then all of a sudden you have a church of a thousand. It's been a little bit bumpy. But it's always through those times that you know, uh, seasoned saints of God always know that it's through those times that God brings you closer to Him, brings you closer to each other. The goal is to make heaven for all of us. Uh, it's just so exciting knowing that we get to spend eternity together. <laughs> through all of our good and our bad, we get to spend eternity together. And that's a good good thing to know. Um, I know I sing this song a lot. I said it before that I have often felt that this song was for our church, that it was something that God has brought us through, but uh, God's worship with me. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I did not understand. And my frustrations get so out of hand But it's then I'm reminded I've never been forsaken
Praise the Lord. You can pursue after God. Amen. Yes. The Bible says that those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, yes. they Amen. shall be filled. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Naaman could have went back with the same leprosy that he came with. Amen. It was up to him, but he had to go yes. dip in Jordan. Amen. Amen. Like the prophet told him to. And when he did, he found his healing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You sometimes have to get involved. Amen. Right. A lot of times, almost every time, if you'll make that first step, you step out by faith, Jesus is going to be there. Amen. Amen. He won't yes. leave you standing alone. If you come to an altar to pray, you're going to feel the presence of the Lord because Amen. He won't leave you there by yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful to know that we have a God that loves us that much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're going to sing. Brother Dixon's going to come. Amen. Let's Lord bless you. You can be seated if you like to. Jesus, my Lord. church, I've, I've got these little folders with me. Matter of fact, it was either last week or the week before last, I uh, got all the way to church and realized that I had left all my preaching notes at home. I drove all the way back to Lincoln to get them. I've always preached that always use notes. Um, I 
I've been told over the years that you need to quit writing those notes out and you need to put everything on the computer. And it makes it just so nice and neat. But I never have done that. One of my brother-in-laws, uh, I guess he was kind of hard pressed for something to preach. So he got in my office and he got in my preaching notes. <laughs> kind of a compliment, really, you know. Evidently he liked what I preached. He going to preach some of, some of the same things that I preach. <coughs> I caught him doing that. <laughs> What in the world are you doing? He said, well, I'm looking for something to preach. And he said, I'd just like to know one thing. How in this world do you make any sense out of all this junk you've got written down here? you got stuff written up and down, sideways. But it's always, it's always made sense to me. I've always preached that way. So the old timers didn't believe in using preaching notes. And some of them were not shy in telling you that. I've been told that more than once. I've never used any notes. That, um, the reason I do is to keep me on track so I won't be just all over the place, which not likely to happen if I don't have something to more or less keep me moving in the direction that I need to go in. And believe it or not, there have been times that I got to a particular place in my notes and wrote, stop. Because <laughs> it actually needed to end right there. But this morning, and I feel like that I am in the will of God, I felt it before I left the house this morning, and some things that actually, that's, that's you know, I, don't, I like to be in the service. I, I have preached for preachers that would not come into the service while the song service and the worship part of the service was going on. They kind of made an entrance after all of that, I never liked that. I preached for guys that wanted me to do that and did because that's what they wanted. But I like to be in the service. I like to get the feel of how that service is going. Hard to do that unless you're there. Right. But because of some things that have been said already in the service this morning, it makes me, again, confident that I am in the will of God. And I really need that confidence right now because I have got written down on this sheet of paper that's almost blank. I have got three scriptures and a title. And I don't have anything else. Just that. But that being said, I feel very confident that we are in the will of God. I want you to look in your Bibles. I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And let's start with, uh, let's start with verse number, let's just start with verse number 12. Well, Paul writing to Timothy says, Fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times 
He shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who only had immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, who no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse number 15 again. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only Pope. Yes. The King of Kings and the Lord. Amen. Of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. It's time to depend on God. Amen. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. You see, we seem to me kind of contradictory to preach from a title like that if I've got two or three pages of notes. It's just time that we depend on God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. From 1 Timothy, it's not the only place that Scripture makes that statement. And we'll probably get into that maybe a little bit down the road here. It's not the only time that that statement is made. That He is the King of Kings. Yes. Yes. And He is the Lord of all. Yes. Yes. He is the only Pope. He is the most high. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if you were to look in the dictionary, it would give the definition of a king probably as a sovereign power. A ruler that has the last say. His word is law. Whatever he says, that's how it is. Yes. He is a sovereign power. Yes. There have been, over the centuries, there have been powerful, powerful kings that have left their mark on the earth. That even though some of them have been gone on to their reward, whatever that may be, for thousands of years, there still are marks on this earth that testify to their power. It was said of King Cyrus II, who was the king of Persia, that in his heyday, that there were more people subject to his authority than had ever been on earth before that time or after that time, even unto our present day, that at the height of the kingdom of Persia, that Cyrus II ruled over almost 50% of the earth's population. Never happened again. The pharaohs were powerful. And they, 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 they left marvels that are among the seven, seven wonders of the world that still haven't figured out how they did it. Then there was, of course, in Bible, Bible times that there were many in Scripture that were talked about that were <laughs> powerful sovereigns that ruled, most of them ruled with a rod of iron. A lot of them were very, very wicked, selfish, egotistical, self-centered people. They ruled with unquestionable authority. Nebuchadnezzar was one of those. From Old Testament.
Testament times, he's an absolute tyrant. He is a villain, if you please. He's mentioned in four different books of the Bible that I can think about. He's in the Kings. He's in the Chronicles. He is in the book of Jeremiah. And of course, he's found there probably most prolifically in the book of Daniel. The Bible talks about Nebuchadnezzar, the king, the sovereign. Yes. History says that he was a warrior king. Amen. Fought many battles and won many battles. It was Nebuchadnezzar that conquered Jerusalem not once but twice. And the second time, it was King Nebuchadnezzar that destroyed Solomon's temple. And in destroying Solomon's temple, it would seem that even the people of God could not stand. I said it would seem that the people of God could not even stand against the power and authority of King Nebuchadnezzar. He took the children of Israel into captivity in the land of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was, he was the one that was, that was responsible for all of that. He took them there in captivity. The Bible says that, that he dictated to his people that these Jewish folks were be, to, to be taught the language of the Chaldeans. In teaching them the language of the Chaldeans, his attempt was to remove their identity. Right. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Well, there's a movement on in this earth right now that Satan is attempting to take away the identity yeah. of the children of God. Yeah. attempted that exact same thing. He said, teach them the language of the Chaldeans. Feed them what the king eats. We don't want them feeding on anything else. We want to make them exactly like we are. I want to tell you something, folks. The church of the living God has never, from its inception, has never been called to fit in yes. with the world. Yes. The church of the living God has always been called to stand out. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. And there is a reason for that. There is hope that is found in the church yes. of the living yes. God. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Those Jews knew a God that nobody else knew. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. Yes. That was the attempt to change them, of course. Praise God. You're well familiar with the story. You know about the image that was set up in the plain of Tyre. Somebody said that it was the image of Nebuchadnezzar himself. And all the people were ordered. It was not asked. There was no plea made. They were ordered that when they heard the sounds of all sorts of music, that they were to bow down and worship before this image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It must have been something elaborate. Hallelujah. It must have been something spectacular. And there must have been many people that were taken in by all of the grandeur and everything that was going on, right. it must have been some kind of celebration. They had come to give honor to a king, yes. a sovereign power. Praise yes. God. Except for some folks, <laughs> my Lord, that did not worship an earthly king. Right. They right. were not going to worship yes. an earthly king. Yes. Hallelujah. You know the reason for, for all of this stuff, this socialism, is to create a government that people are dependent upon. 
that they cannot make it without the government. That's what it's all about. That's exactly what Nebuchadnezzar attempted to do and set up an image. Amen. And commanded that all people worship the image that he set up. There were some Hebrew folks there. There were some one God folks there. There were some Israelites there. That they only worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they would not. They determined that they would never bow themselves to anything else. And you know the consequences of that. A, a furnace that was heated far hotter than it had ever been heated before. And these rebellious young men, as far as Nebuchadnezzar was concerned, was cast into the heat of that furnace. Hallelujah. They were cast in after giving the king an answer. He had asked them a question. He said, who is that God that is able to deliver you out of my hand? It shows his arrogance. Hallelujah. He never thought that there was any authority or power that was higher than his. But just a few minutes later, he comes off of his chair, looking into the heat of the flames and fire. And he said, we cast three men back into the heat. And how is it that I see four and they are loose and they are walking around and the flames said, I'm going to make a decree. He said, there is no God that is greater than the God of Abraham, or Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. And I'm going to make a decree. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Because there is no yes. God found yeah. that is greater than their God. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar was a king. He was a powerful king. But the one he was dealing with on this day was the king of all kings. Amen. Amen. After walking through his the city and looking at the castle, Nebuchadnezzar saying, is this not glorious battle that I have built? He was immediately smitten by the power of God driven out of his castle into the field, eating grass with the cattle, hair and fingernails growing long until seven times passed over him. And then God allowed his mind to come back. And he stood up and declared again that there is no God like this God of glory. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Nothing is as powerful as what he is. Hallelujah. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is sovereign in his power. There is none like him. He knows the ending from the beginning. Hallelujah. He is a storm calmer. He is a sea walker. He has the power over death. In the grave. Hallelujah. Nature itself has to obey the voice of this God. Hallelujah. Amen. The body powers cannot stand against him. Jesus has to bring it. He even has the power to call one that's four days dead out of his tomb. He has the power over him. He has never lived like it to this day. 
there's any doubt in our minds that we are we are there living it in time. Praise the Lord. It's it's an exciting time. And I think that a time that we ought to thank God for. Because yes. we could have lived at any point in history. And God has brought us here. Yes. Yes. We have come to the kingdom for such a time as us. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, baby, folks, y'all got some long faces this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That will excite us. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That the King of Heaven, the God of Glory, has enough confidence. Yes. Amen. If not in this flesh, then in the spirit that He's placed in this flesh, right. yes. He's got enough confidence that we can not only survive in this world that we're living in. But we can prevail in this world yes. through the yes. yes. because we are made conquerors. Yes. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, we are more than conquerors yes. Yes. through the blood of the Lamb and through the Word and by the Word of our testimony. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Yes. Let me do that again. More than conquerors by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was one time a drunk. I'm not anymore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was once lost in sin. I'm not lost in sin anymore. Thank the Lord. There used to be a lot of confusion within me of who God was and if there really even was a God. But I want to tell you something. That confusion. It exists no longer. I'm absolutely determined. I not only know there is a God, I know who He is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I know Him by name. Oh, my Lord. God has brought me out of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. And He never brought me out of darkness just to be doing something. He had a plan. And He had a will. And He had a call. Praise God.
The Bible says that this, this woman, that the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her. And that the people of the earth that weren't found written in the Lamb's Book of Life were drunk on the wine of that fornication. Or because of what the kings did, it affected the world. It is a spiritual situation. Now that I understand. That we're talking about a spiritual situation here. We are talking about a religious system. The Bible calls this woman the great whore. And that's a vital term. I'm not, I'm not saying dirty words in the pulpit. When that statement is made in Scripture, it's invariably said about people that have turned away from God to serve false gods. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. He said that the scripture says that, that this woman rode on this beast, this, 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 this creature that, that the kings of the earth have submitted themselves to. This scarlet creature, this woman Rolling on the back of that system, that 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 false religion, that that spirituality that is no spirituality, it is deception. Right. right. Yes. And that she rode on the back of that. The Bible calls her the mother of harlots. If she is a mother, then she has some daughters. And if you want to figure out who they are, the Bible says that this city that's, that's in the same uh, Revelation 17 is a city that's set on seven hills, and it's not too hard to figure it out, and you can figure that out, and you can figure out who this, who this mother of harlots is, and you can know those daughters by simply comparing the similarities between the daughters and between the mother. You look there and you find the similarities, then you understand that these people have been affected by the fornication of the kings of the earth. And they are, have been deceived and they are living in deception. Hallelujah. The Bible describes it all in that setting of Revelation chapter number 17. It says that these kings, these heads were also, were also kings. Even the horns were kings. And the Bible says that there was power that was given to these kings for one hour. Which indicates to me that they will have power. But it will be for a short time. It won't last very long. That they will have this power. That they will give this power. That they are one of mine. And they will give this power to the system this beast, this religious system, this deception. They will worship this thing. They will bow down just like the people bow down on the plain of Cura to worship this image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. But when the Bible gets down to Revelation chapter 17, verse number 14, the Bible says that they will make war against the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. They messed up doing that because that scripture continues to say, and the Lamb overcame them. For He is the Lord of Lords and He is the King of Kings. Amen. It says it backward in that scripture. It says He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. Now hold on. That's not all it says. It says also that they that are with him yes. are chosen, called, and faithful. Praise God. Somebody's going to be with him. Somebody's going to be worshiping him. Somebody's going to be walking in the fire. Somebody's fire is not going to hurt. Somebody's. Hallelujah. Only the bindings are going off. Praise God. I'm preaching this morning. It is time to depend on God. Hallelujah. 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 H
praise God. Like we have never depended on God. There's much going on in the earth. It can distract us. It can also worry us. Hallelujah. If we're not careful, it can bring upon us a feeling of defeat. It's time that we depend on God. There is a promise in the word of the Lord that he will bear thee up less than any time you should dash your foot against a stone. He is the one that makes the impossible yes. possible. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, There's no God like him. Yes. The mighty power does not have power over him. Hallelujah. The kings of the earth do not have power over right. him. Right. In their arrogance, hallelujah, believing right. that they know more than God knows. So I don't know who it was. Somebody said it was some old hippie. I don't know. But somebody, I heard it in the 60s, that God is dead. That he no longer exists. I sure would like to meet the doctor that made that prognosis. I would like to talk to the coroner that signed that death certificate. I would like to meet the man that knew him well enough to look at him and identify the body, praise God. And I would like to know why I was not identified, why I was not, was not notified since I am a part of the family and God died. Somebody should have been obligated to let me know since I'm part of his family. Now, I don't know. I can't explain all the book of Revelation. After all these years of reading Scripture, I still struggle with it. Try to figure out exactly what's going on here. But I do know this. Revelation chapter number 17 is describing a horrific battle. I can't imagine the horror of it. The Revelation 17 is describing a spiritual battle. Oh, yeah. I cannot understand, grasp the horror of it. But I want to tell you something, folks. According to what thus saith the Word of God, that even in that horrific situation, He can be depended on. Yes. That's my second scripture. The third one comes from Revelation chapter 19. There's a war. There is a battle going on. But in the setting of chapter 19, the Bible describes the king of glory. The king of heaven. The Bible describes him as having a vesture dipped in blood with a name written on it that says in one place a name written on it that says the word of God I like that yeah. that's not the only name that's there there's a name there that nobody else knows save he that's what the Bible says but when you read a little further scripture says that there was written on his vesture and on his spine yes. there was a name Amen. King of Kings and Lord of Lords Amen. it's time that we depend on God yes. hallelujah we can look at the situations and I don't know what all of them are but we can look at the situation in our the situations in our own lives among our own families yes. and people that we know. And it can be a little bit depressing if we don't look at it the right way. Yeah. 
because we understand that I cannot, with my intellect, bring these people out of the darkness they're in. They won't listen to me. I can't, I can't get them out, not in my flesh. I cannot get them out of what they are bound with. Right. But I know somebody who can. Yes. 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 Amen. Jesus. Jesus. He can be dependent on. Yes. 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 I don't care what your situation is. He can be dependent on. Yes. Yes. Praise God. And it is time, church, that we depend entirely on God. Amen. To be self-sufficient is, and I think we all have a knack for that, but to be self-sufficient is, is, is it's a curse because there is so little that we can actually do when we depend on God. Yeah. You know what, folks? That's what makes that's what makes home missions work so exciting. Because yes. you don't have any money. Right. <laughs> Thank the Lord, hallelujah. We ain't got no money. <laughs> Therefore, we got to depend on God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we don't have a bill. We don't have means to get a building. Well, praise the Lord. Right. Because we don't have a building and we don't have means to get a building, guess what? We're going to have to depend on God. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. We may not even understand how to fill that building up, but you know what? He knows. Yes. He is able, and we depend. I'm sort of preaching simply that it is time to depend yes. entirely on God. Yes. It is the most incredible place to be. If you have ever been there, it is absolutely amazing. You know, it was a, it was a, a dream of mine. I, I knew, well, years, years, even before I had the Holy Ghost son, I knew that something was going on. But I didn't know exactly what it was. When I was 18, I uh, went to Bible school right after graduation from high school. I didn't know anything about God. Knew very little about the Bible, but I knew something was something was going on. Um, I wish I kind of figured it all out when I was that young, but I didn't. I was 27 when I got the Holy Ghost. And almost immediately felt the call to preach, and I realized that that actually had been going on my whole life. I just didn't really know what it was. And aside from being having a call of God and thank the Lord for it, I don't think there's anything greater on this earth living for God. Well, in fact, I know there's not. It was also a dream. I just, man, I wanted, I wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to preach. Well, I was in church quite a while before I actually ever did. As a matter of fact, I've been in church seven years. And been in a lot of different positions in the church. But anyway, uh, moved to Arkansas from North Texas. 
started going to Brother Hassel's church. Brother Hassel told me, he said, I don't know whether you'll ever get your license or not, but I'll tell you this, you'll be used. And he made good on his promise. And I done all the stuff uh, to get my license. Uh, I was working, I was working the night shift at Campbell Soup. I was a plant electrician and working the night shift. And, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do on night shift. So all the stuff I had to do to get my license, I did all of that study while I was at work at Campbell Soup in the office we had. I did all that study in there. And got paid for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he can be dependent on Yes, it. Well, that time to meet the board was, uh, man, it's only about a week off. And my wife asked me one day, this meeting was in Little Rock. We live in Fayetteville. Ruth asked me one day, she said, how are we going to get to Little Rock since we didn't have a car? At least not one that would go to Little Rock. It would barely make it for three or four miles to church. And I'm not joking. I said, I don't know. I have no idea. But I can tell you this, if it is the will of God for us to get our license, that God will make a way. Yes, amen. It's just so neat to be in the place. And sometimes you wonder, why in the world, why didn't God just blow the fire out? He could have done that. He didn't have to put them through that. Why in the world did he let them go through the fear, no doubt, I mean, of this furnace and all of that when he didn't have to do that, he just put it out. It's the same reason, folks, that we go through situations that God is trying his best to teach us to depend on him. And that's the only way he can do it. You've got to be in the situation. Well, it was only about two or three days until the meeting took place and we didn't have a car to go down there. We didn't have no way of getting there. And Lord Bailey called me one night and said, Brother, are you going to go try to get your license? I said, well, that's the plan. He said, how are you going to get there? And I said, I have no idea. He'd seen that car I was driving. <laughs> well, he said, me and Jimmy's going. Y'all can just go with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we did. It all worked out. Yeah. He can be dependent on yeah. In every situation, whatever the situation is, it's time to depend on God. To trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the same. Jesus!
life before the throne yes. is by living a totally repentant life. Repentance, we stop to think about it, is an incredible, powerful thing. Yes. So I'm going to ask him, he's probably going to ask all y'all.